Welcome back to the writer's wardrobe, everyone, and welcome back, Sir Screecher. Am I the first returning character this season? Uh, no, you're not. But you are the most mentioned by other characters, if that counts for anything. Surely that's worth some sort of reward or something. Or something, in this case, and by something I mean nothing. Poor effort. You're swaying a little bit, Screecher. Are you drunk? You're drunk. No, I'm not. You should be. Have a wine with me. I can't drink. I have a fatty liver. Fatty living is the best way to live. Lazy lives, one and all. Screecher, what possessed you to come to the wardrobe drunk? Who told you I was possessed? It's a figure of... Gilroy's the one who's possessed. Shh, don't tell him. Don't tell anybody. Gilroy's not possessed. We just had him on the show. He bloody is. I've seen it. I had to get him back somehow. Get him back? What are you on about? After I got him killed. Now, hang on. You didn't get him killed. He told us you only almost did. He doesn't know. And then I accidentally unleashed the devil into his body to bring him back, and sometimes he gets angry. You should have looked for a solution instead of getting drunk, don't you think? Getting drunk is the solution. Seems like more of a di- Shh, awesome man. You don't know what it's like. You sound a lot like your father when you're drinking, don't you? Don't tell me the bloody wizard is here. He's not here, but I think he does hold the record for most appearances and most interruptions. Sounds fitting. I'd like to talk to you about your unofficial title, if that's okay. Bloody Screecher, good a name as any. How'd it come about? Everyone knows my name. They all talk about it. Who wiped out the bandit camp? Bloody Screecher. Who killed the bandit king? Bloody Screecher. Who's the voice of an angel? Bloody Screecher. Who ate the last piece of cake? Bloody Screecher. You know, I'm not sure it's as complimentary as I thought. It's a good name for any occasion, then. Aye. So why the drinking? Did you feel bad about getting Gilroy killed? Of course I felt bad. Alas, I am drunk for a far more sinister reason. Oh, and what might that be? Liquid courage. I got the idea from one of your patrons. Ermermer. Ermor. Ermamu? One of them. Courage. Couldn't let that stuttering twerp Jacoby upstage me, could I? My goodness, are we finally going to hear the wicked busty lady? Bet your britches. Hold on to your chaps and all that. So long as it's civilised, I, I don't want a repeat of Jacoby's filth on here. I assure you that nothing I write is filth. It is class incarnate. Very well, you better get started. Shh, no, I'm sorry. Shh, close your eyes. At least imagine we're in a tavern full of patrons. I fell in love with a wicked busty lady. She was just tall enough that I could bury my face. But then I thought it queer, and I knew that it was shady. Something not quite right was my true love a disgrace. And then I heard from across the sea that if there's hair, oh, which is she? And so I ripped her skirt off and a fool I turned to be. Because she had not shaven since the day that she was born. I wanted to run from dawn till dusk and dusk till dawn. But something kept me in my place. Was it just her pretty face or was it just that she's a witch and I a little pawn? But oh, there's hair, there's so much hair down there. A warrior with steel so sharp would brawl to cut her bare. And yet, this witch, this crafty giant bitch, dug her talons in me with a love I cannot itch. I fell in love with a wicked busty lady. She was just tall enough that I could bury my face. She showered me with love and care, and she was nothing if not fair. And I thought, oh well, I'll just ignore the hair. Oh, oh well. I'll just ignore the hair. That's it. That's the whole song. Always gets the room thumping. Screecher, screecher, they cry. And I... For f**k's sake. I know, it's brilliant. It's worse than Bren's. Don't insult me like that. You're lucky you're drunk. You may not remember this fiasco. I could lose all my patrons, Screecher. They expect nothing less than pure professionalism and clean humour. And you bring a song about pubic hair and, and bosoms. It could ruin me. What did you think a song called Wicked Busty Lady would be about? Well, I thought it was about an evil little statue thing, you know, like like a bust. Oh, oh, you know what? Forget it. Between you and Bren, I think you may have killed everything the wardrobe stands for. You'll be back next week. No, I won't. You will. You have another brilliant author coming onto the wardrobe. I wish I could write like her. I wish I knew what letters were.
You're right. I'll come on for the author's special episode. But after that, I'm done. Done! You heard it here, folks. You heard my own characters slaughter the show with their slanderous singing. This used to be the writer's wardrobe.